All right, what is up, my little tubers? Welcome back for another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and don't forget to subscribe as we have some more Phyrexia. All will be one. Still in the world of best of one. I've been mentioning this on a few videos, but I'm going to be doing um, a set overview at the end of it all. And I'm going to go over my stats um, with someone to somebody named Circovitz from 17 lands. So I wanna make sure I get up to a sample size of at least 100 drafts of this premiere format uh, so that we have some relevant info to look at. Anyways, let's look at our pick one, pack one here. So this is gonna be best of one. We are player drafting again, it is ranked. Maybe I shouldn't be playing ranked. I'm like ranked 20 right now, but open a Drivnod, the Carnage Dominus. I don't like this one. I think this is the weaker end of the Dominus creatures. I think I'm just going to take the Bladed Ambassador here, pick one, pack one. A couple of okay red cards, Charge of the Mites, there's an Annihilating Glare. Ambassador just looks like the best card here by uh, by a far amount, a large amount. Comes down early, really annoying. Just a solid one for sure. And we're probably going to follow that up with a nice looking removal spell here. Going to take the Planner Disruption. I like Disruption a little bit more than Hexgold Slash in the format, although I think both are quite nice. Um, could also consider Porcelain Zealot, I suppose, but I think the cheap removal is a little bit preferable to the aggressive 4-drop. It is aggressive, but it's not ag aggressive itself. Um, you really want to curve out with that card, but I think the planner here probably makes a little bit more sense. Another Annihilating Glare going around. Two. Easy planner there for me, I think. Okay. Now we're seeing some other colors. Another Porcelain Zealot here would be the best on-color choice for us, but it's not the best card in the pack, and I think that just has to be the Vorak. The Cinder Slash Ravager is very good, obviously. Um, but I don't even know if it's better than the Vorak, especially since the Vorak keeps me more open. It's going to be a little bit awkward if I take a red-green card after taking two white cards, so... I think this makes the most sense here. I expect red to be cut off pretty heavily in pack two. This will be, what, two slashes we've passed and now a Ravager. So something to take note of that uh, might not be correct to move into red. Although, like if I get a fifth pick slash or something, I'll probably still end up taking it. This is quite a bad pick Four. We have a Shepherd here for us, but beyond the Shepherd, I don't think this pack has anything you're really happy to play. Shepherd's been a great 5-drop. Just a lot of value, and a 3-3 Flyer for 5 in Limited is generally fine. So, not bad for us there. Okay. Stalker in the pack, Brutalizer in the pack. We do have some of Blue's better commons. I think a Taxian Raptor is Blue's best common, and Watcher has been surprisingly good as well. Especially when you have some good artifact synergies to go along with it, but this looks like a good enough pick. Green white is normally the color pairing of a toxic aggressive deck, though obviously you don't need to necessarily be toxic. If we just have good creatures, good curve, then that'll be good enough. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, that's kind of crazy. That is a very good sign for green. Sixth pick Vorak and an infectious bite. The problem with the Bite and even Ruthless Predation, I've said this many times on stream, uh, is that you already have to have a creature on the battlefield, right? So you're never going to be casting this on turn two, or at least it's very unlikely you're going to be casting this on turn two. Um, and in a format that is this fast and this board, present, board presence necessary, I think we'd rather just have another Vorak here. Crazy good pickups, though. Pretty weak pack overall. I mean, this one's pick seven, so there's not much to take from here. Um, the best choice might actually just be not take one of these white or green cards, as I don't think they're going to be that necessary. And maybe if we end up in red, taking the rebuke or the free from flesh could work out. Plague Nurse versus the Bardiche. Plague Nurse is okay. Really, you want to be doing 
toxic things, obviously, if you take this. But a 3-4 for 4 in this format's not bad. And our wheel pack here. All right. Crescendo versus nothing. Maybe since we already have a red card. Or I could just take the glare. I mean, we're kind of seeing a black signal of sorts. I guess the glare is the best card here. So what were my picks? I first picked the Bladed Ambassador, I second picked the Planner Disruption, and then I guess we didn't really see much uh, white after that. But green is where we know we want to be. Right? Pick six, Vorak. And it was a, what, pick four or something, Brutalizer? Hmm. I guess we're still open to any colors. Could even be green-blue still. Not that I want to end up in that direction, but you never know. I picked 10. Theorist came back. We're not doing the artifact thing. Helm came back. This has been an okay equipment. Preferred Mirrodin equipment usually play out better than they look. Though this is not my preferred one. Thirsting Roots for safety or the Bardish for the... Uh, Bardiche. Sorry, almost said the wrong thing there for the extra. We'll take the green card. I have not found Noxious Assault to be any good, but who knows? Another Thirsting Roots. Okay. Well, we know we're in green, and we opened an Evolved Spinoderm, so no complaints by me. Four mana, five, five. Oil Synergies, Trample sometimes, Hexproof otherwise. Yeah, this card's very good. What are we losing out on? There are some good cards here. Skitterfang's great. Cultivator's good. Troll's decent. And then some other cards in other colors, but for right now we're just looking at the green stuff, and a Spinoderm is gonna be the key, I think. There have been quite a few games in this format where you somebody just plays a Spinoderm on turn four, and then has like one way to push it through, or one trick, or something like that. And uh, kind of just ends the game. Interesting. Azuri is a powerful card. But I'm not sure it's worth taking here. Honestly, over like Basilisk. Or maybe the Duelist if I wanted to stay in white. Duelist is just a good two drop. Basilisk is a good three that keeps us in solidly green instead. Dune Mover is also safe, although I wouldn't want to take that over Duelist. Let's go with the Duelist here. It's a good two. Geth, huh? This pack is just bad. I guess I'm going to take the Troll. I guess we could take Vanish into Eternity as well. It's an okay removal spell to have access to. And we're not really doing too many oil things yet anyways. Yeah, and I think one of the trolls probably can come back around on the wheel. Uh, another four drop green creature, sure. I mean, I'm probably going to end up cutting the Plague Nurse is what my guess would be. We're not going to take Fuseling here. We're not going to take Prism. Gosh, I kind of want to just take the Predation Steward for a two-drop green creature. Instead of taking another Mantis or taking the Punisher. I guess maybe we can still be moving in that direction, huh? The Oil deck. Eh, I mean... Can't take that. Golfer's okay. Cackler's fine. Predation's okay if we want a big top-end card, which I don't think we need, though. I need to choose a direction. I need to choose what we're doing here. Seven is so much mana, but wow, that is an extremely late war whip. Obviously very far from where we are, and Cultivator's great, so I'm happy to see that, but war whip's gotta be one of the best uncommons in the format. Canopy's okay. 
I don't mind main decking one of these things. There are always going to be targets for it. Realistically, this is where we're at. We know we're playing green. I mean, the white is what I'm leaning towards. And I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of white in pack 3, which will be nice. But for now, our white is nothing to, to really be excited about. Whispers of the draw. I mean, we're not going to play any of these, right? With double roots and two Vorax, it's not going to be hard to splash something if we want to. I don't know. Double Vorak makes me more likely to play something like Pal Paladin of Predation because this helps you hit your land drops, you know? And that Evangelist wheeling super late too. Card's very good. We don't really have much of a poison plan. Another Whisper of the Dross. Basilica Spellbomb's okay. Hmm, messy. Messy, messy, messy. Let's see if pack three can give us some goodies to kind of bail us out here. Some decent white opens, some okay green opens. Jawbone Duelist, pretty good. Lensing Raptor, pretty good. Predation's fine. If you're looking at the deck, though, we don't have ways to push the Duelist in. We don't have any pump effects. We don't have that much oil, or rather, uh, poison synergy. Maybe that's still the route we go. Just because Raptor doesn't look that good here either. No, I'm probably supposed to take Predation. No, we, need, we just need to take the, take the weaker removal spell. That's fine. Skitterfang over nothing now. Not unhappy to see Skitterfang, but... Not happy to see where we are. <laughs> What happened here? What was I supposed to be in? I mean, we did see a lot of random black cards cards go around, but I'm not sure the black was actually all that good. Like, given how late we were seeing good green in pack two, I would expect we see a lot of good green again here in pack three, unless somebody decided to jump in after opening like a Thrun or something. Another Skitterfang, an Atrocity, a couple of good white cards. All right, this pack's nice. Wow, we have a ton of options in this pack, actually. And I'm not sure what's right. That's tough. That is a tough one. I don't want to keep the curve cheaper and maybe take one of these. God, I almost want to take the glider, but I don't think it's good enough here. Oh, yeah, I'll take another skitter thing. There goes another evangelist. We have our second shepherd, or we can take our first engulfer. How useful are the might tokens going to be? Not very. So is a 3-3 three, three flyer for 5 better than a 6-5 trample for 6? Titanic growth is going to be pretty good here, I think. We want the tricks since we don't have much removal. Fastless going around, that's fine. Man, it's just... Everything was black-white going around, but I don't think we saw that much good black-white. Um, like We saw a lot of evangelists and stuff, but 
How many cheap poison creatures did we see? All of them were in white, right? The flensing raptors and stuff. But we didn't see any crawling choruses. We saw very few cheap black poison effects. So I don't know what's going on here. That against the odds looks surprisingly good. We have a lot of value three drops to either flicker or return back from our graveyard. I like playing that. Yeah, there are just like 10 evangelists going around. But nobody wants them and it didn't even look like it was that good. Like there goes a siphon or two. I don't know. This was the pack that had all the good cards and they're all wheeling. Man, indoctrination attendant bouncing skitterfangs is kind of juicy. This is a lot of four drops now. I'm going to cut the paladin of predation here, I think. Don't need two thirsting roots, do we? The proliferate's not bad in our deck, though. I would say this is more just like green white aggro and not green white poison. I felt I drafted this a little bit weird, though. I wonder if I go back how the black-white deck might have looked in this pod. Because you would have had like three evangelists, but... Would you have had enough ways to push in the poison? Maybe. There were a couple of flensing raptors we saw. But not many two drops? Yeah, there weren't many two drop toxic creatures. There was like a Dune Mover, the Duelist, uh, one, three, one, toxic two that we took something else over. No crawling chorus. I don't know. I don't know. question is, is this deck good? I think it's alright. I don't mind running 16 lands, double roots here. We have a lot of usage for the proliferate. Right? I have a decent number of oil creatures. And then we do have ways to randomly poison, so... Looks good to me. 7 and a 9, I think, is right. With double roots and the two double green cards. Okay. Yeah, I'm rank 20 now. And this is the end of the month, so this is probably not a good idea, but... Rank is just a number. number. Although, if I'm in the top 200, I do auto-qualify for something, so... Let's just win every game. And this is a good enough hand to do that. Turn one Cultivator, turn two Duelist, turn three one of these. We also have the Disruption in our hand. Well, we lost the die roll and our opponent played the Cultivator turn one. Womp womp. I guess ideally we just naturally draw a land next turn. Mantis or something here. Post combat rabble. Hmm. Well, did not find our land. That sucks, but hopefully Vorak doesn't. If Vorak bricks on land, that would be very bad for us. 
Lost our Spinoderm down. I'm okay to just keep trading. There's a Mantis. Hopefully we can just run him out of resources. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they would attack with a token there. I think I'm actually going to trade now. And then we can disrupt their Ravager. It's not bad. Okay. I'll play the Attendant, bounce a land, replay the land, and then uh, disrupt their Ravager. Fine. Yeah, they only have one more card left in their hand, so I think we're sitting pretty good. They want to double block my attendant. Uh, I think we're happy with that. Bolt Surge, mm, Bolt Charge, rather. Okay, a little bit annoying, but now they're living purely off the top and we still have action left. Big is good. Okay. Again, I don't think I mind if they double block here. Yeah, no blocks for me. Okay, um... Let's just go Predation now on the Rabble. Skitter Fang, let's give Flying the Vorak. That way they can't double block it in trade. Yeah, this has been a pretty active, uh, interactive back and forth so far.
Back and forth, back and forth. There's a lot of chimney rebels they've drawn. Um, hmm. yeah, it's not great for us. I guess we'll trade our skitter fang away at this point. I'm going to save the Titanic for something scarier. I guess if they triple block this, I would use Titanic. take four here. If they don't block my Vorak again, we can just go for lethal. Although I would expect them not to take another hit. Well, definitely not the card we wanted to draw there. <laughs> All right, there they go. We have a lot of action uh, on the bottom of our deck, so I think casting the Thirsting Roots makes sense. Like our last Vorax saw four spells that we bought them. There's also the Spinoderm from the first one, right? Yeah, if they have Tiver's Stand, I'm going to take Lethal. Looks like they do. Yep, good beats. I'm not jumping there, so... What can you do? I think my only other game plan or was to maybe fire off my um, Titanic on my 3-4 and have saved that earlier. But what turned what what ended up happening is that both players didn't do anything large, which we were saving the Titanic for. And then um my 3-4 would have been pretty good versus them. Well, I guess they would have just equipped one of their 3-3s. Three yeah. I don't know what happened there. Good grindy game, but we just ended up dying. Juju's. On to our next game. We did lose, what, four ranks there. We're on the draw, man, with nothing to do before turn four, so... I don't think you can keep this kind of hand. We're going to need to mulligan down to six. And that's just a much better six, as sad as it is. I think on the draw here, pitching a land is absolutely fine. We have a bunch more land plus two thirsting roots that we can draw. So if I just happen to brick on my third land, I think I would consider that unlucky. This is two duct cube from the 17 lands. Actually, I don't know if he... Um, has anything to do with 17 lands himself, but I know he... Uses it a lot or something.
Do I want to just land or disruption that and swing in for five? Could go Skitterfang and attack in with Death Touch. Versus Black White, though, you don't really want to get poisoned on, so I think I'm okay just to use Planner here and smack in for five. And again, unless the Head Cleaver goes away, we can Attendant bounce back the Disruption. Canopy should find a home versus black white. It's gonna suck if he also has an attendant to bounce the head cleaver this turn. He's just gonna run out the evangelist, okay, I like that. But yeah, versus black-white, it's really, really nice keeping them off of corrupt. There it is. Uh, oh, he's thinking about not bouncing the head cleaver. That would be great for us. Damn. Well, another Skitter Fang is pretty spicy. We can put a two-turn flying clock on now. It says when you do target creature, you control. I thought I could almost have a combo here. Skitterfang, target one of my opponent's creatures, give it flying, and then canopy it would be spicy as hell. I think I'm just going to take the hit. We only go to two poison. We get to keep both of our Skitterfangs. I don't think I want to block the one one there. Brown, okay. Well, if he just plays Head Cleaver, we don't have. Oh, yeah. If we, if he plays Head Cleaver and I draw a land, I win. Because I can give the Vorak flying, so three would get in automatically. Yeah, land wins then here. It's not land. Ah. Brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Okay. Well, we'll go Spinoderm and pass. I'm not worried about being poisoned out this turn. Okay. I 
think we just go like this. Take five. Have lethal. I think this is my route to victory. He's been representing a trick. It could just be like complete devotion or it could be the death touch trick. We don't die to the plus two this way. Knew it. All right. Nice. Woo. Well, it would have been less of a sweat. I just hit my sixth land on that one turn for Vanish, but we'll take it. <laughs> we will take it indeed. All right. One and one now. Okay. On to our next game and our hand on the play looking pretty juicy here. This will turn one cultivator, hopefully ramping out into a, well not ramping, but getting a Vorak online. On turn three. Ooh, the flesh cutter I see. Some kind of white poison deck. All right. Oh my gosh. Well, that's very, very unlucky. Vorak missing lands after all of that is insanely unlucky. Sheesh. But what can you do? I couldn't miss twice. Thank God. <laughs> We're going to take a bit of damage from that crawling chorus. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to plan or disrupt the Corvus next turn, depending on what happens here. No, I guess we're probably just going to... Hmm. Maybe we can race this, right? What if I just take the Corvus damage? Instead of trading with the Cultivator, although trading with the Cultivator is pretty tempting. Actually, let's do that. Let's trade with the Cultivator. Because that's going to make them pay 3 to re-equip. We get to smack them for 6 and play the Mantis out. I think that looks pretty good. This is extremely aggressive, but that one missed land off of the Vorak was so bad. We currently have lethal on the board, you know? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna take the hit. If they just play like one big creature, we do have lethal. And that will do just fine, Chief. That will do just fine. Sometimes you gotta turn on the race. The racing shoes. And sometimes it works out perfectly. Did I just go from 23 to 24 with a win? Okay, well, win and lose ranks. That's just good. Good, clean magic. Okay, on to our next game. Oh, we're on the play with this hand. This is probably okay to keep on the play, though. It's not ideal. We'll go ahead and grab another forest here. We'd love to find something to do next turn, but not a huge deal if we don't. I'm not going to show him the second color yet, since we uh, rooted for a forest. I'm happy just to play out another. 
That looks like a black poison of some sort. Another game where we still... Oh, no, no, we're good to go here. Never mind. The Filigree Silex. Interesting. We're just curving out fine here. Nice thing here is I have a 1, 2, and a 3, so there's Silex. Cannot kill multiple permanents of mine at the moment. Pass. Yikes, that's not a good thing for them. We're going to attack in with the Vorak and the Ambassador. We want to leave the Cultivator back, I think. Actually, no. Because I drew the six land, we can attack with all of them. Yeah, this is going to be too hard to come back from. Like, even if they put the Silex on two, all they can kill on my side is the Ambassador. And funny enough, if they do that, that's also going to kill their Siphoner. Just to kill the Cultivator, that's pretty sad. You gotta do what you gotta do, though. That's fine. Give a nail Annihilating Glare, my Shepherd, maybe? Okay, yeah, I mean, they got to clear off the board a bit, but they're still missing lands, and technically they are dead next turn. Pretty good. All right. Ah, uh, the old Flood versus Screw. Looks like they had a pretty solid deck. Hey, all right, we went the right, direct, uh, correct direction this time. Nice little 3-1 start. On to our fifth game, once again on the play. I'm not going to mulligan hit that hand on the play. It's just way too good of a 3-drop, 4-drop, 5-drop potential curve. Yeah, turn 3 Vorak, turn 4 Spinoderm. Turn 5, Shepherd, and then Titanic Growth. Remember the three rules of magic I always say. Be on the play, curve out, don't punt. It's fine. I don't mind trying to race here. I have got a big boy. In fact, next turn we can go Vorak plus Titanic Growth for a really good uh, use of our mana as well, efficiency-wise, instead of playing Shepherd. I like that. It's a good sign for us that they're sacking that off to cycle immediately. Nice. Okay. That's smacking with both. I'm not going to use the growth if they block the Vorak, especially since we drew against all odds. Because now that's, that Vorak's a really nice one to bring back. Count on their cultivator, volt charge, proliferate, that's pretty good. Uh yeah, let's attack with both here, or all three here. And 
then we're just going to proliferate with our Spinoderm. With our Vorak, rather. Well, we didn't have a choice. Gives our Spinoderm Hexproof again for our turn, and then it's going to gain Trample on our turn, and we can growth it back to finish them off. Yeah, my Gloss is good. It's not going to be good enough here. So any of the non-might tokens unblocked is lethal, of course. Right, and that will do just fine. Okay, be on the play, curve out, don't punt, working fantastically. And just like that, we are a nice little four and one. Well, we're not on the play, but this hand does look like it can curve out pretty well. Turn one cultivator from the opponent. Yeah, we're definitely going to Thirsting Roots for another forest here. One drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, six drop. One drop, two drop, start from the OP, though. Oh no! We drew our one drop on turn two. It is unfortunate. I will absolutely trade here if given the opportunity. Don't want to trade with the Vorak uh, to another batter fisted creature, though. Against all odds and Bladed Ambassador put on the bottom. I mean... Do we want to make him use a trick here to kill my Vorak? I guess I'm okay with that, especially if it's Crescendo and they still lose their Cultivator. Yeah, that's fine. I see nothing wrong with that trade for us. Let's play the 4-4 this turn so we can block the 3-1. And then next turn we can play Mantis plus Cultivator. Sure. So I go to 14. Cultivator... Actually, maybe I'd rather play another Vorak here. Yeah, let's do that, because the Mantis just trades with anything uh, if they attack. Lost our Spinoderm. I'd rather trade the Vorak off than the Cultivator, you know? Okay. Yeah, a bunch of cheap, aggressive red-green spells and... Nice little curve out here from the opponents. Can they beat a 6-5 is the question. They already used one Rebel Salvo. If they had a, 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 if they have another or the Molten Rebuke could beats. But this just might be the biggest thing on the board. Very nice. And so we actually get to attack in here. Because if they double block, we can order the damage so their scamp wouldn't die. And then they wouldn't get to kill my creature. And we can race pretty well. Oh yeah, great draw. This is a funny turn. I'm gonna go Predation on the Scamp. Attack with both. And then I'm going to Attendant bounce the... Disruption. All right, you got me to six. GG's. Hmm. 
We just had a little bit too much fat in the end for them. They had a good deck for sure, but our draw was great. A couple of Vorex do a lot of work. And wouldn't you know it, we're rattling off 5-1 and one now. Oh, I will say, um, if you're still watching the video, thanks. But uh, tomorrow, um, wait, let's see, when am I recording this? Tomorrow, which will be February 28th, they are adding Alchemy, All Will Be One Draft. So we are going to be doing some of those. And that should be a n nice... Uh, all right, dude, you're cool. That should be a... I don't know if you could hear that revving, but that should be a nice change of pace in the format. So excited to see... Uh, what the alchemy version is. Alchemy generally adds a bunch of just like broken cards to a normal dro draft format, and I'm expecting that's going to be the same, but we all know how I feel about this format, so maybe maybe that's going to be a good thing. I don't know. All right, on to our game number seven. How do we look? Ooh, a little bit slow. Really, if the first play you're going to make is on turn three in this format, you ideally have something that's three power because there are just so many three toughness creatures in the format that can just attack into you. I'm not going to mulligan this hand, but I think in this format it's kind of crazy that mulliganing, mulliganing a hand like this is perfectly acceptable. Probably playing against blue-white artifacts. Yeah, I'm glad that's not a Justicier on turn two here. But like I said, my first play currently is just going to be the Skitter Fang, which just doesn't block anything. The good news for us is that the Skitter Fang lifelink is probably going to get us back in the game, because with the Mantis we can gain a ton of life back. Especially it looks like the opponent's going to go pretty aggressive on us. Yep, and they have one of the best. This is... We are not going to win this game. Not with this. Let's give life link. let's attack. If they block, of course, I'll use Titanic, but I'm not expecting them to block. Another Eye of Malkader, yeah. Not good, not good. Double top again, yikes. And if they just have like a pacifism here, I mean, there's no way we can win. We might have a small chance if they have nothing else this turn. But it's looking pretty bleak, obviously. And the lifelink is huge here. Okay, let's play out another Mantis. So they're going to be playing another artifact this turn. Oh, that's very bad for us. Sure. So if I had a second Titanic growth, we could maybe win. But I don't think we have a way out of this, right? We can hit him for 9 next turn. Our only hope is that they don't have another artifact. I would have to disrupt the sentry, play blocker. Yeah, if they don't have another artifact, technically I can survive.
Psycho Attendant here. Bounce planes. Disrupt the flyer. We're going to bounce their own experiment to replay it. Then we would trade with one eye, jump the attendant on the other. We wouldn't die, though. Ah, all right. Well, that will do her. All they have to do is attack. GG's. Yeah, pretty nice play on the, or pretty nice curve on the play there. We could almost race that too. If we were on the play instead or something. But that's what I get for keeping a hand that doesn't do anything until th turn three. And like I said, playing a 2-2 two -two on turn three in this kind of format, you just can't do. You fall way too far behind, so... GG's. So 5-2 and two on to game 8. How are we looking? We're on the draw. We have a 2-drop, 4-drop, 5-drop. But we have a ton of good draws that we can make by turn 3 to make this a fantastic curve. So let's keep this hand. I think one of my biggest weaknesses as a player is I just play so much off of intuition. Like, intuition can be very, very good, but oftentimes if I just spent, you know, an extra five or ten seconds th thinking, could frequently find a better line. That is really bad. They have a turn three forge on the play. That's going to be very hard to beat. I need to trade with the mandible here. Actually, I need to cast the Thirsting Roots this turn. I need to be able to cast one of my large creatures and start giving it lifelink. Hopefully they don't have too much more follow-up. But even still, if I can't put a lot of pressure on them quickly, this game is going to be over fast. All right. Oh, pretty good curve out here from our opponents. I don't mind if they double block, but I would actually prefer if they don't. And I think from their perspective, double blocking is actually really good because they have the forge. Now remember, planner disruption on the forge doesn't stop it because that's a trigger. That being said, if they wait a turn and they move the halberd over the lightbringer, that's... four power by itself. Okay, they are going to make the double block. I'm going to take five here. They might as well equip the halberd to the flyer. Yeah, if we draw a land for it and go for next turn, that would also not be terrible. Oh my gosh, we hit the perfect. Wow, that is beautiful. Forgot I had that in our deck, and we can actually put an extra counter on our uh, Skitter Fang, too. Oh, that's a savior. Let's keep bolstering our life total. That's, a, that's the total swing of the game. We probably win now. We have so much action, they have nothing but the top deck, so... Unless they rip something juicy. Which, that's really good. Wow. That was a really good draw for them, but... Just killing the forge makes me feel a lot more confident. 
Ugh, we need to find a land so badly. Mm -hmm. I guess let's just play the Basilica Shepherd. As that stops everything but the indoctrination attendant. Man, that attendant was a really good draw. Oh, okay, so two really strong top decks in a row. I'm going to take six here, go to eight. Well, that's brutal. I really hate using the disruption on their 3 4. But I guess it makes sense here. Feels like we just need to hit one more land and we win. The nice thing is, I can use all the counters on this Skitter Fang and then flicker it with Against All Odds to get three more counters. Eight. There's the land. So now let's go. Life link here. Attack for three. If they block, we'll give it indestructible. Just play out our other Skitter Fang. If they don't, great. Gain three. Play out our six five reach. And that probably will do our excellent. So they would have to triple block to kill the engulfer. And we would kill the glider and the halberded token. Oh, that doesn't work. Whoopsies, I think they might have miscounted there. I'm not going to run out any more creatures though in case they have wanderer or twilight. Okay, phew! Man, those Skitter Fangs did a ton of life-linking work there. Our opponent had a really good draw, and then as soon as they ran out of action, they drew three great spells in a row, but we got out of that with that carnivorous canopy or whatever it's called off the top. I forgot we had that in the main. That was very close. Okay, so on to the final round. We're 6-2. and two. For all the marbles, can we get the trophy? We are on the draw. The hand looks okay. We have our one equipment to go with against all odds as well. For the extra value. Opponent has a Sinew Dancer turn one. Justicier turn two. This is all okay by me. Should cast. Roots first, maybe. Glider, hit me for three, that's fine. Where are all your poison creatures? Or maybe they're just running Sinew Dancer as a... Uh, 
Four mana tapper, I guess. They don't have blue yet, so running out the Mantis while we can seems fine. That's okay as well. We can, against all odds, to flicker that. There's a Crawling Chorus. Okay. See if they cycle the spell bomb. They're cycling the blue one. I'm okay with that. The white spell bomb can push a bit of damage, though. So every poke I take here is really, really relevant. Like, oddly, we want one of our creatures, like, we want our cultivator or duelist here to die so that I can get extra value from against all odds. Okay, that'll work. I'll double block the justice here, here then. Oh. Well, this is weird because they don't even get to kill both my creatures. Hmm. They are at a healthy life total, though, and with the double skull bomb, they can press the lethal pretty easily, is my concern here. Yeah, this is bad. This is going to be like a two-turn lethal. Like, I just have to play Mantis and pass. The Spellbomb on Chorus, attack me for four. Gives me two poison. Spellbomb on Chorus, attack me for four. Gives me three poison, and then the Glider's lethal by itself. Oh, they didn't do it, though. Okay. Ah. <laughs> well, I mean... Okay, hold up. One good top deck deserves another. Like I would say their top deck of Vindicator there was kind of insane, but... They still just have me on a fast clock here. Yeah. I can push a lot of damage, but I'm not going to be able to kill them that quickly. Down to 19. In a perfect world, where they spell bomb and don't block with Sinew Dancer, I do have lethal. Or if we rip like Ruthless Predation off the top. Oh wait, no I don't. The second Mantis doesn't have a counter on it anymore. So I'd be a little bit short. Ah, and they have a removal spell anyways. Alright, that'll do her. GG's. Put a little bit of fear into them. Good beats! <clears throat> Not sure much I could have done there. Hmm. Well, we went 6-3, and three, and I think we ended at the same spot we started, so can't be too upset with that. Rank 24. Nice little green-white deck. Like I said, this didn't have much synergy. It just had a lot of good green and white cards. The draft itself was pretty interesting. Um, because we could have gone a few different routes. I mean, obviously, look at our sideboard. We had a bunch of good black cards. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you back tomorrow for some more. You might get some alchemy of this draft format. So hit that like and subscribe. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.